Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna go through how I made Solus the Ancient Sun Stag. Uh, and this is the second stag that's kind of like an ancient themed um, style. So if you wanna see how he's made, stay tuned and I'll go through the entire process. Okay, so I'm starting off with a resin head and I actually used this head um, in a couple of my paid tutorials. So there's one um, casting glass eyes. Oh, actually, I think that's the only one. Casting glass eyes into a resin head, that tutorial. So um, I did it on purpose because I wanted to actually do the sun stag. Um, so yeah, you, you can see how that, um, how I cast glass eyes. If you are looking for a tutorial, it is paid. Uh, so obviously no obligation, but if you are looking for that tutorial, it is available in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Uh, and I also added these antlers on top of my resin cast. So these antlers are plastic and I got them online from a supplier and that way they're a little bit more sturdy and they don't break. So you can give them a hell of a bump and they won't break at all. Um, so it's pretty durable. And I found that better than actually sculpting or casting or molding the antlers. Molding antlers is a big pain. So I actually found these to be way easier and they're good proportion uh, for my dolls. So what I've done here, if I, I've just painted around the eyes, the nose and the mouth using a black chromacryl acrylic paint. The brand is chromacryl. Um, it's just acrylic paint. Uh, I do um, prime all my resin pieces before I paint. Um, and I also prime the plastic piece. Uh, if it's, as you can see, it's primed up now. I do have a primer video. Uh, you can check out on my channel if you want to know what primers I use for resins and plastic which I've tested a few of them and I found that this one is the best one. So now I'm going to go over and paint the antlers using that same black acrylic paint. And this paint goes on pretty well, so I only really need to do one coat of this one because I'll be putting other colored paints on it as well um, because I want it to have like a coppery gold effect. So when using like a, a coppery or a metallic kind of tone, I always find having a black underbase to be um, really helpful in achieving the deeper color. It really brings out the metallic. So I'm going to be using this old brass color by Lumiere by Jacquard. Uh, I did ask in my previous video if someone wanted, if, if anyone wanted to um, have a swatch video and I had some people say yes. So I will do one of them soon. I just got to find the time to do that. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks I can do a swatch one on these types of paints. So with all my dolls, I have a little backstory. So this is Solus's Ancient Sun Stag's backstory. Ancient Sun Stags are highly worshipped creatures. They are a symbol of the Sun Village and are said to bring health and happiness. Their image has been seen in ancient tablets dating from 500 years ago in the past. Although there is only one known Sun Stag, it is protected by the residents of the Sun Village. It's thought that Solus is over 200 years old and no one knows how long they can live for. Located in the yellow tribal lands of Maho in Krai, India. So that is Solus's little backstory. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just going around with the copper paint again uh, and just filling over the little black areas, especially the, the parts where um, I've missed or it's a bit streaky. So I, I actually only did one coat of this copper paint um, just because I wanted the black to show through a little bit. I, don't, I didn't really want it to be like a solid, solid copper. I want it to have sort of like a like it like a sheen to it or something um so i only did the one coat and then um for the tips of the antlers i actually used a gold paint and that sort of blended into the copper paint so this is the gold paint it is also by lumiere by jacquard in sunset gold and this is probably the best gold paint that i've used or come across um, i really like the way it I like the pigment in it and I like the way it paints and it has a great coverage for gold paint as well. So I know some golds don't have a very good coverage or have a strange colored pigment, like it's more of a brown or something, but I find this one to be the best one that I've come across. So what we're going to do is just brush on pretty lightly with that gold paint on the ends because uh, I didn't want it to be too gold. Um, I just sort of wanted the tips of the antlers so I've got to watch myself and that I don't get too carried away with the gold. Um, and it's only a subtle difference but I like the, the, the depth that it gave it. 
So same deal with the little hooves. So this is also a resin cast by me and I have used a plastic ball and socket armature for this particular doll because it is quite big. It needs something a bit more sturdy than the normal wire armature that I use or even the smaller plastic ball and socket armature. So this is the bigger one um, and I have attached it to the resin piece and it is ready to be put together once it's all painted. So just going the same, same technique with you know the antlers painting it all black with that chroma acryl acrylic paint and then once that's dry going over it with that copper paint and the same deal just doing a pretty light coat of this paint over the black just because i wanted that streakiness to come through again and have more of a coppery sheen to it than like a solid solid copper color Moving on to the faux fur and so this is like a faux fur that I've used previously in a lion but I'm going to be using it for this stag. It is unfortunately the last of this faux fur. I can't get it again and I don't know actually where I got it in the first place. Um, but I thought it was, it always sort of reminded me of like a sunburst something or other. It just reminded me of sunburst. So I thought this um, faux fur would work perfectly for the stag and I had just enough um, of material to do the parts that I wanted to and um, what I've done here is just drawn out the um, patterns and cut it out with a small pair of sharp scissors and then I also paired it up with this black fur and this is the notorious black fur that doesn't cut um, it's a real pain to do anything with to be honest um, but the it's the softest faux fur that I've ever touched in my life um, it's really really good quality uh, it's so so soft so soft it's just really difficult to work with um the only scissors that actually i found that cut this are these little ones here for some reason um i've tried all of my scissors that i have but nothing actually cut them uh, and i don't like using blades because it sort of frays the backing and it sort of stretches especially this fabric because it is woven so if you apply too much sort of pressure or tension to it it ends up fraying and sort of stretches the fabric so you don't want that when you're working with this and this fabric is kind of like staticky and it sticks to your hands as well so that's another thing that it does for some strange reason I guess because it's so soft it just sticks to things and you end up can't get it off your your hands so what I've done now is I've sewn up the body on the sewing machine, leaving some bits open so I can hand sew it and achieve a bit more of a refined body. Um, so something that I'll probably be doing a bit more is refining my bodies a bit more. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that just yet. So experiment and we'll see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the body the right way around. So I've left the legs open and the bum open so I can flip it. So this is what we have so far. Um, there'll be a little bit of blending that needed to be done uh, in some parts and some trimming um, just to make sure it flows a bit better. Um, but pretty happy the way it turned out already. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to feed the armature into the body and then I can start sewing everything up. So here's a little look-see at what um, it will look like and also um, hopefully the neck will fit. <laughs> Alrighty, so sewing up all of the pieces, um, I, as you can see I have already put the armature inside so ready to be sewn up. Um, the thing when you, you're using these armatures and doing small like little legs and stuff is just to be wary of how much fabric you have given to be sewn so I know I've made that mistake a number of times where I have um, not had enough fabric to go around so I had to unpick what I've just sewn on the sewing machine uh, and so I hand sew all of it um, just so it can get around the armature especially if you have large ones like that so what I'm sewing up now is a tail so really not much detail to go into I just use a ladder stitch to go around and sew it all up 
And when I've done that, I can attach the faux fur to the resin using a tacky fabric glue. And I like to use this one. Uh, it is from Spotlight here in Australia, but you can find something very similar in your area, wherever you live. Um, just any local craft store. So mine's a local craft store um, and they have endless supplies of this um, glue. So I highly recommend this one when you're attaching um, fabric to resin bits or anything else. Alrighty, once that's done, I go ahead and add the fur to the face, give it a little trim, make sure everything is sitting right and I haven't missed any spots. Uh, and then once I have done that, this is what it looks like and I'll go ahead and add some shading or any designs or anything else that I want to add to the face. So in this instance, I'm, I wanted to add like a little burst of color to the face. So I decided to go with some yellows, um, um, sort of like fading from like an orangey yellow to a yellow um, just in the eye crease or whatever you want to call it so I started off using my finger and I wasn't really happy with the way it was coming out so I moved to the brush and just worked it into the fabric a little more and um, I'm just using some a chrome acrylic paint again it's just acrylic paint um, because if you saw my vlog you will see that my yellow paint curdled <laughs> so someone did ask for a, um, a video on that so I'll try and make a video on that specifically I'm not too sure what to say about it um, so if you have any suggestions or want to know anything about it leave it in the comments down below and I'll see if I can add those into that video um, so what I'm doing is I'm just adding that orangey yellow to the corner and sort of blending it into that lighter yellow um, and then I just sort of added some orange to the end of it just to brighten it up a little bit. I also did a little marking on the forehead it was a little difficult to record because it was on a strange angle but you can see it in this picture anyway. So this little one isn't for sale but I have a lot more dolls in my shop at creaturesofnat.com that are looking for homes so head over there and check out if you like anything. I do have payment plans available just ask and I'm happy to organize something for you. And that is it for me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any video requests you can leave it in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creaturesofnat and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!